We're back uh, here with uh, Jack Glasner, our advisor throughout, and the uh, count is about to resume, I guess, at this stage for the final run to the launch. That's right. They're uh, holding in nine minutes, and uh, in a minute or so, according to my clock anyway, they should resume the count from uh, T-minus nine. What are they doing in this uh, these last nine minutes? One of the major things they have to do is start the auxiliary power units. This uh, cranks up the hydraulic systems uh, so that the engines will work and the uh, flight controls and so forth, and uh, that's very critical to have that ready to go by four minutes before liftoff. Looking a little less cloudy than it was about five or ten minutes ago, um, that, uh, to your expert eye, I guess, Jack, that looks looks okay for launch? Hard to tell from here, but I haven't heard them say anything uh, about uh, a hold uh, due to weather, but uh, I think they're planning to go. Areas. T minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer from now up until the T minus 25 second point where they switch to the onboard uh, redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers, which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as the propellant loads, temperatures, pressures and other measurements are proper. The landing and recovery director has ordered the chase planes to take off. T minus eight minutes and counting. Everything proceeding smoothly to an on-time liftoff of 7.33. The liquid oxygen fill and drain valve in the external tank has been closed and topping of that tank completed. Liquid oxygen drain back has been started. This means that liquid oxygen is draining, uh, is flowing back through the main propulsion system into the large storage tank to cool the system down slowly to 270 degrees below zero so that they won't be shocked by the torrent of supercode fluid at the time of engine ignition. T minus seven minutes, 20 seconds and counting. The crew access arm should be retracting now. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to get from the service structure to the orbiter. If an emergency should arise, the tower can be put back into position within 15 seconds. T minus seven minutes and counting. Everything going smoothly as we move towards a liftoff on time at 7.33. The crew access arm moving away from the, uh, the orbiter now back against the service structure to be out of the way for the orbiter's liftoff. At the six minute point, the crew will perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start which consists of positioning a number of switches and verifying they are in the proper position. Then they then throw the three propellant isolation valve switches, which allow the hydrazine fuel to start flowing from the tanks toward the APUs. Coming up on the six minute point in our countdown, uh, we have the auxiliary power unit pre-start underway now. Pilot Rick Hauk uh, performing that. T minus six minutes and counting. T minus five minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Pilot Rick Hauk has completed the APU pre-start and says they're ready to go. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The flight recorders are on. The flight recorders provide measurements of the shuttle system performance during the entire mission for playback after landing. Just 15 seconds away from APU start. This is a major milestone because we have a very limited amount of propellant to run those, uh, so there's a limited amount of hold time there. T minus five minutes and counting, and we have a go for APU start. 
the APUs provide hydraulic power to move the aero surfaces and the main engines for steering on board. T minus four minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The firing circuit for the solid rocket boosters ignitions and the rain safety destruct devices has been armed and we have APU start complete. T minus four minutes, 20 seconds and counting. The main fuel valve heaters have been turned off in preparation for engine start. The main engines on the orbiter will actually start at T minus six, eight seconds. And it takes about three seconds for them to reach 90% thrust at which time the solid rocket ignition sequence starts. T minus four minutes and counting. The astronaut crew has closed the visors on their launch and entry helmets and the final helium purge of the orbiter's main engines has started to ensure that there is no surplus hydrogen or oxygen in the area at the time of ignition. T minus three minutes, 40 seconds. The Elevon speed brakes and rudder are being moved through a th pre-program pattern to ensure that they're capable of doing their jobs during the, the uh, launch. T minus three minutes, 25 seconds. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving their fuels from the ground launch uh, equipment for another minute. The profile checks of the aerospace, or uh, the aerosurfaces is complete and verified and they're in launch position. Uh, the engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines uh, is underway to ensure they're ready to go. T minus three minutes and counting. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, hold capability is limited to three minutes and 36 seconds. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds. The gaseous oxygen vent arm is being retracted and the fuel cell supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated. The vehicle now on its onboard supply. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The main engines have been moved to start position. The astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories of their onboard computers and verified there are no unexpected errors. Oxygen vent are moving away, T minus two minutes and counting. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed now and flight pressurization is underway.